All right, so hello and welcome to our session today. Today we're going to be talking about how librarians and instructional designers are often an untapped collaborative resource on university campuses. Our goal is to highlight how collaboration between our roles, you know, librarians and instructional designers positively impacts student success. And we'll be sharing our own experiences of how we join forces to support faculty and in really creating innovative and quality, quality aligned courses. And we hope that you're able to walk away with ideas for you know, developing similar um, collaborations at your own institutions. So my name is Stephanie Corsland, and I am the Senior Instructional Designer for the College of Arts and Sciences at the University of Cincinnati. Thanks, Stephanie. And my name is Chrissy Ross. I am the Director of the Library at Cincinnati State Technical and Community College. And although we work at separate organizations now, Stephanie and I became professional collaborators at a previous institution where our work, as we will explain, naturally overlapped. At our previous organization, librarians and instructional designers were housed in the same building, both inside of the university library, allowing for a convenient and productive par partnership between the two of us. We have both moved on from this organization and continue to learn to navigate our new organization structures, which do not include direct links between librarians and instructional designers. This has emphasized to us how serendipitous and useful our professional collaboration was, and we suggest the partnership for all to consider who have not already. So what is an instructional designer and a librarian? I know this may sound like an easy question, especially for this group, but I think some may be surprised by just how many people would not know the answer. To be fair, I think both roles have evolved considerably over the last few years, and the evolution was specific to location and organizational needs. All of this to note, librarian and instructional design work varies by organization, and we were lucky to be at a university where librarians and instructional designers shared space and allowed for a very collaborative relationship. The following is what Stephanie and I discovered through our organic campus work, fueled and sustained by a simple mutual passion for open education resources or OER. I still think that, you know, leaves this open to, you know, what is an instructional designer? What is a librarian? And, you know, from my perspective, you know, what is an instructional designer? It's a really good question because, you know, even among instructional designers, there is variability in what we do. And I often, you know, we often call ourselves a person of many hats. We do many things, you know, we're course designers and builders and trainers. We can be media specialists and project managers and, you know, sometimes technical support and, you know, so much more than just all of that. I think the thing that really ties all of us together, all of us instructional designers, no matter, you know, what we do in our own role is that instructional designers really use theory and research to inform the work that we do. Thanks, Stephanie. And I know the librarians in the group can definitely relate to what you said. Librarians wear many hats. Our work is also complex and diverse and continues to evolve quickly from my experience, much as Stephanie described with, uh, with instructional designer work. But easy to say, librarians and instructional designers really are a match made in heaven and hopefully those descriptions kind of pointed out a few of the reasons why. Our work complement each other's on many different levels, including faculty outreach, identification of open diverse resources, copyright work, information literacy application into course builds, and course quality assessments through identification of open, diverse, equitable, inclusive, and accessible resources. Unsurprisingly, our work as librarian and instructional designer are natural partners for faculty looking for course redesign support. Faculty that contacted the library at our previous institution were able to connect with librarians and instructional designers, so resources and pedagogy, and vice versa, faculty that sought instructional design support were also able to connect with the library and its resources, promoting what we both had to offer via one point of contact, and ultimately bringing many more campus faculty into the library. 
Redesigning courses, as you all know, is complex work that some might argue is best suited for a team approach. Teams to support faculty in the pedagogical approach, activity creation, and resource identification. Ideally, these teams also are passionate about integrating diverse representation into their courses. Access to experts in accessibility and educational technology are also important team redesign roles. Redesign teams should support faculty to deliver expert content in an inclusive and dynamic format that supports student retention and graduation rates. This can be accomplished in a variety of ways, for example, by removing financial barriers and selecting open and free resources for the course. Another, by increasing a sense of belonging in the classroom, by choosing resources and activities that represent your students and the students can also see themselves in. This can be accomplished and customized through open pedagogy work. So we're here to, you know, talk about OER and their role in student success. And I think one of the things we first need to even do is, you know, sort of define what we mean by student success. Because there are several different ways that student su success can be defined. And, you know, generally when we think about student success, we think about it being measured in, you know, quantitative terms. So you have retention rates, you know, who not only who's returning from, you know, semester to semester, but year to year. You have completion rates. So this is looking at long term. Um, the measure of students who complete their degree within, you know, five or six years. Um, beyond that broad scope, we can also look more closely at like the individual course level. So things like DFW rates that, you know, drop, fail, withdraw rate from a class, or even, you know, academic achievement within a single course. So that's looking at, you know, the average course grade and how that fluctuates term over term. And there are even many more factors that have been shown to play a role in student success, you know, things like self-efficacy, sense of purpose, um, social integration, and so much more. Now, the case we'll be examining here focuses specifically on um, student success within individual courses, looking at DFW rates um, and academic achievement. So there's a growing body of evidence that suggests OER are directly related to student success. One University of Georgia study evaluated the performance of over 22,000 students who switched from a commercial textbook to an OER. OER improved course grades and DFW rates at higher rates for underserved students. OER improved end of course grades for all students, but specifically improved course grades at greater rates for non-white, Pell eligible, part-time, and populations historically underserved by higher education. OER decreased DFW rates for all students, but specifically at higher rates for the same students, non-white, Pell eligible students, part-time, and populations historically underserved by higher education. This study is a presentation in itself. But we hope to get this because it's very interesting and we hope to continue this conversation on our discord channel specifically about how or why oers support student success why why these rates may have um, increased or decreased accordingly but one thing is clear this study showed that the switch to oer from a commercial textbook did more than save students save students money which in and of itself is, in, is important as higher ed continues to become held held accountable for afford affordability issues and for increasing diversity. But the switch also impacted student success by improving course grades and DFW rates. Now, going back to the intersection of our roles, you know, the role of the librarian and the instructional designer, what the numbers don't show and, you know, what we have both seen in practice is that it's not just about OER adoption, adaption, or creation alone. It's, you know, really much more complex than that. And, you know, beyond adoption of OER, it's also about implementation. It's, you know, how is the course um, designed? How are those materials adapted and developed? How is that course um, implemented? So how is the instructor actually teaching it? That all plays a role in student success. 
it's the intersection of these ideas and of our own work that helps move that needle forward. So in instructional design, we often talk about, you know, starting with the goal in mind. What is the objective that an instructor wants their students to achieve? And often what we see is the exact opposite. So instructors are starting with the materials and then determining the goals based on what's available to them. You know, it's that book that's determining the goals. But the great thing about, you know, OER is the flexibility of the materials. We know that faculty are able to more easily start with their desired goals in mind and find materials that meet those needs. Um, they're able to use information literacy principles of, you know, identifying quality materials to support. And we know that it's not always going to happen at once. You know, both Chrissy and I, when we work at, with faculty, we're often telling them you don't have to switch everything out at once. You can, you know, start with what you already have and just supplement with OER. But again, what OERs allow for is that flexibility in determining your own objectives and helping um, students achieve them. It's allowing instructors to bring in those diverse voices that may be missing from traditional materials. And as an instructional designer, you know, from a course quality perspective, what it ultimately allows for is this alignment between goals and what students are actually learning and doing in the class. And so both our roles play, you know, both the librarian and the instructional designer are really important in helping faculty with all of these things, helping them, you know, come up with what are good OER? How do we, you know, evaluate these tools? How, how do we determine and build that, you know, quality course? So we hope that you join us on Discord to continue this conversation. We'd love to hear your own stories of how librarians and IDs have come together at your own institutions to support student success. We hope that you'd, you're open to sharing your thoughts on you know, how OER support student success. You can look for our tag um, under the lightning talks on the OpenCon Ohio 2023 Discord server. It's that hashtag librarians and instructional designers, a match made in student success heaven. Thanks, Stephanie, and thanks everybody for coming and listening to us today. We really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to continuing the conversation on our Discord channel. We'll see you there. <laughs>